hey there, guys. I didn't see you there because I'm on vacation. That's actually a lie. I'm not on vacation. I am in a green screen room that I had access to this week, and I figured, why not play around with it? Um, that's completely unrelated to what we're actually doing today, though. This is a build-out video for an upgrade enclosure for our blood python, Scarlet. Uh, she is nine months old at the time of this recording and had just finished her quarantine, and so it was time to give her an upgrade. Uh, we're using an enclosure from Dubia.com. So this is Scarlet's enclosure. We've got a little pond in the back and I'm putting in a humid hide for her. I really like this humid hide because it's got a magnetized top, which means that we can take that off and get some better access to her when we need to. Um, that pond in the back is for her to soak in. She, uh, while in quarantine, spent a lot of time swimming in the pond that we had for her. And so we wanted to make sure that she still had that space. This lovely piece of Mapani wood we got from Petco uh, for a pretty great price. Um, I loved the texture of it and thought it would be helpful for her when she needs things to rub against for shedding. And that piece of wood that I just put in there actually did not survive. Um, it was a natural piece that we got around here and like baked it so that it was treated and would do well for being safe. Um, but it didn't do well with the humidity levels in her enclosure, so we had to take it out. These are some powder orange isopods from Rubber Ducky. I love how well they know the ins and outs of all of their isopods, and then I'm sprinkling in some springtails. Uh, those are mostly going to be on the humid height of humid end of her enclosure, just uh, so that they can take care of things on the end where things are a little more moist and be less exposed to the higher temperatures on the other side. Um, and then we've got another hide up on that back wall that we stuck on with magnets uh, that was given to us as a gift, and it's pretty cool. I thought that if she wanted to get up higher, closer to the basking light, for whatever reason, it would give her a nice little perch to get up in there. Uh, this is Cole and I discussing plants and placement and how I wanted to kind of format everything so that it would look really nice. Um, <laughs> here he is discussing how basically the roots work for the different plants because um, some of them are rooted together and others you could actually pick apart. So we're going to start with this spider plant here. It's got um, tuber roots and so we couldn't really split it up very easily but that's got its little spot in the back corner there. It's taken very nicely over time. And then we've got some, oh gosh, what's it called? Parlor palms. Um, it's a type of grass and we could actually split those up so I did. Um, I wanted to kind of line the perimeter with those a little bit more to create something cohesive that kind of carried a little more. And Full disclosure, guys, I am not the plant whiz out of this operation. That is entirely coal. Um, and so in a moment here, he's actually going to come up and talk about um, using the budding patterns on, on vines to our advantage because when plants um, produce a leaf, they have an appendicular leaf and an axillary leaf. Um, and he taught me all of this in just a moment here. But by removing that, that uh, dominant leaf, the axillary bud is um, the next thing that the plant uses for growth. And so if it's underground, then it's actually used to create roots and start a new branch of vine as opposed to creating a leaf there. And so that was us. Um, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of watering, wandering dude um, and we're gonna put that in. I wanted that one to really stretch across. We had a lot of wandering dude to work with and we know that it's safe and reliable and just absolutely flourishes um, in a humid environment with not a whole lot of attention to it. And then that leaf that I just put in there is actually marbled pothos. Um, I personally love pothos. Um, and this marbled pothos we found at a plant store and I was absolutely in love with the pattern of it. Um, and so I made, made sure that Cole tossed it in the cart so that we could bring some home and I just had to put it in Scarlet's enclosure. But more of that wandering dude, um, both the marbled pothos and the wandering dude have taken absolutely beautifully in this enclosure and really grown in, even in spots that I just put a leaf um, with very, very little to work with. It just blossomed, um, not, not with flowers, but uh, with more vines. And then I'm putting some sphagnum moss inside of that humid hide. As I mentioned before, that, that magnetized lid is something that I just really am grateful for. And then here's another layer of repta chip um, on top of the substrate. The substrate in this enclosure is a few inches of eco earth topped by a little bit more of repta chip. And those are actually both made out of coco coir. It is uh, the husk of coconut. Um, and so they'll do 
about the same in maintaining humidity in this enclosure, but the eco earth underneath is going to really hold its shape when she burrows through it, whereas the reptid ship is going to give her a nice rough texture that she can rub up against when she's shedding and help promote um, getting that, that extra uh, scale, scale layer off. And then over the reptid ship, we did some hardwood leaf litter. Uh, when we had her in her quarantine enclosure, she spent all of her time hiding underneath layers of uh, paper towel. We took basically a whole roll um, and made little rumpled up balls for her and she spent all of her time underneath that coverage. So I really wanted to prioritize getting her a lot of leaf litter coverage. And then on top of that, just for our personal preference, the aesthetic of it, we did a layer of sea grape leaf litter. Um, she's not going to really notice the difference a whole lot between the hardwood versus the sea grape, but we thought that the, that the sea grape looked nice. We went back, filled in just a little bit more of the uh, wandering dude and the marbled pothos until I was happy with it and then put the doors on. And this is us pulling the enclosure up onto the shelf, shelving unit that we have. Um, you'll notice that I am not the lifter um, <laughs> between Cole and I. He did a lot of the heavy lifting here. And then we just kind of get the enclosure where we like it, make sure that the basking light is um, over that Mapani wood, um, just so that she has something nice to sit on if she wants to. Um, Lately, what we've been seeing is that she actually has been hanging out under the leaf litter next to the Mampani wood rather than sitting on top of it. Um, and even just kind of rubbing up on the underside of the Mampani um, to get some of that nice ribbed texture that was on the underside of it. Um, so yeah. And now while Cole is anchoring down that halogen bulb, I am grabbing Scarlet out of her quarantine enclosure, uh, which is actually on the other side of the reptile room from where her new one is. Um, you're going to see her in just a second. She, I think she's absolutely gorgeous. Um, she is about 20 inches long. Oh, there she is. Um, 20 inches long at the time of this recording and about nine months old. Um, has almost doubled in weight from when we got her. And so she's definitely been prioritizing um, grams over inches, which is absolutely to be expected in a snake as bulky as a blood python would be um, like her. She does still have a little bit of an attitude, hence the gloves, and actually she does not enjoy this enclosure for the first 10 minutes or so. There's a lot of new smells, um, and you can actually see her ribs expanding and contracting pretty aggressively. That's um, that stress level from the new smells. But when we came back 10 minutes later, she was fully immersed in the leaves and has been doing absolutely wonderfully. It was just that little hump of getting her used to the new smells. And as promised, this is what she looked like 10 minutes later after we came back to see how she was doing. Um, I don't know if you can quite see where she is, but her head is right there at the corner of the Mopani wood. And that is all that we have for Scarlet's build out. Uh, she has been living in there for a while and doing pretty great. So um, if you have any questions, compliments or critiques, please be sure to let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to follow along for more enclosure builds because this is certainly not our last and we would love to see um, you guys follow along to watch our growth and development as we continue to get better at what we do. Thank you all for watching. Hope you're doing great. Bye-bye.